Stampy's Lovely World ran for over 11 years and just ended. So let's go back and see it all from the very start. Stampy loads up the world and makes his first shelter in this cave. Now it's time to build his house, the same one we all know and love, but hold up, you can craft cakes? You can also tame dogs, and Stampy would do that from the very start. Meet Gregory. Stampy goes to build a storage unit, and Gregory's dead already. He was shot by a skeleton or maybe someone else. No, a skeleton. Stampy needs a new friend though and he adds his first helper, Crimson Azoth. They build the house up more and Crimson himself is the builder of the love garden. Stampy adopts a dog named Cedric and also a dog named Barnaby. Let's skip ahead to the next helper. Ank55 shows up and is helping Stampy with the first ever mini game. Stampy also has 12 dogs now. I don't know how it happened. So we've seen a couple people already. However, nobody will change the next decade for Stampy as much as this person. Here we have Hit the Target. Coming in is Stampy's newest helper. Basically, right away, he starts putting signs down that say loser and point right at Stampy. Stampy didn't pick up on that one somehow, but to reinforce the point, Hit the Target had two dogs in a cage and wanted to make an evil dog army. So, what will Stampy do? A, attack him, B, confront him, C, save the dogs, or D, just act like nothing is going on and it's a cool helper that's building cool stuff with him. Yeah, he, he, did, he did that one. Stampy carries on and adds Longbow X99 to the world along with X Breadstick. But here we get to the true start of something amazing. The first ever minigame is done. It's a golf course and the fun land we all know and love is created. Stampy decides his mega mansion isn't mega enough, so hit the target, who's still a helper for some reason, helps Stampy extend it. But suddenly, one of Stampy's dogs named Guilty Bark is killed. Hit the target is to be blamed for it and is exiled from Stampy's house. And it's peaceful lovely for now. World. And what an especially lovely day uh, it is in today's lovely world. Not so fast. Amy Lee 33 somehow joins the server. No invite was given and she leads Stampy to a sign. The first of many signs we're gonna see. The sign warns Stampy that hit the target is going to attack him. And he does just that, killing X Breadstick. Yeah, I, I forgot he existed already too. One of Stampy's dogs dies and Stampy ends the battle by killing hit the target. And I mean, that's the end of hit the target, isn't it? There he is, I can get him. Don't you dare hit the target. There it is. There's hit the target right there. It's got to be hit the target and... Um, <clears throat> yeah, no, that, yeah, that's the end of him for sure. Stampy celebrates Christmas, meets Henry the Snow Golem, and Fred the Friendly Enderman. The mobs dubbed as Googlies to Stampy wish him a happy holiday and are sorry for the trouble that they caused that year. In comes... Lee Bear! They build the Creeper Coaster roller coaster, and then Eyeballistic Squid shows up. Stampy makes a waterfall so he has a better view, and then has a nightmare. A sign becomes clear in his vision. Revenge will be mine, dash hit the target. Stampy wakes up and hopes it means nothing. Surely nothing, right? He builds Googlies Manor and Crystal Waters, and then the helpers put on a play to celebrate all the progress they've already made. Stampy creates a secret base under his house in case that nightmare was real, and hit the target is somehow still alive. He also gets this pet chicken named Esther. Drop a comment for Esther, not enough love given to this little man. Stampy Stampy's dog Cedric dies, and while building the grave, we catch a glimpse of a ghost. The ghost of Hit the Target himself. Stampy heads to the nether for potion materials, and here we are. What I'd say is the real beginning of this story. Hit the Target had been sent to the nether after being killed, functioning as a hell of the lovely world. Hit the Target explains that he isn't evil, and is trying to save Stampy's dogs from Stampy because of how many are dying on adventures. Stampy apologizes. He didn't know Hit the Target's intentions were so pure. So pure that Stampy decides to give him a tour of his entire house, even the secret base designed to keep him away. No worries though, Stampy and Lee build mini games and even a rocket ship. Stampy then flies the rocket to the moon. Okay, here we go. I can hear the engine starting. There's the thrusters and we've taken off. We have launched. Goodbye, lovely world. I'll see you soon. Stampy arrives and sees two figures, known as the Lunar Friends. They eat lunar cheese. That's that's pretty much all that there is about them. Stampy's Hot Buns is founded, and to celebrate the grand opening, Stampy gets his dogs, but soon finds that they're all trapped in hit the target's house to make that giant evil dog army that he wanted. Maybe hit the target isn't so pure? Hit the target's to-do list. Steal Stampy's dogs. Take over the world. Get milk. Stampy finds hit the target, but he escapes, frees his dogs, and moves on with things. This is gonna be a battle to last the century, though, because only a week or two later, Stampy needs a cake, bakes one for himself, and decides he needs more. Bake another one. Uh, what if he goes back in time before he eats that one that he just made? Oh, yeah, no, that makes more sense. So, he makes a time machine, goes back way too far, though, is attacked by dinosaurs, and freezes himself back to current day like Captain America. He sees hit the target again, and this time traps him in a jail cell. Stampy still can't believe his helper was such an evil villain. Oh, uh, he's, he's gone again. 
hit the target just vanished out of the jail cell. Stampy, Lee Bear, and Amy Lee all built shops, mini games, and have a good time for quite some time. Stampy repeats his morning routine every single day until one day on his way to the doghouse, he sees the two aliens from the moon, the lunar friends. They had followed him back home in their UFO, but it needs a cake to fuel it. Stampy fuels up their UFO and gets a golden apple from the lunar friends. This golden apple is essential in a second, all right? Crimson has now left the lovely world. So after meeting Hilda the Iron Golem, Stampy changes what was Crimson's room to a room for Hilda and Henry. Uh, this way and oh look they're all growling they're all getting all agitated they keep doing this recently they keep getting really annoyed there's there's got to be something happening in my world which is upsetting all of my dogs and there was he goes to sail the ss stumpy for the first time and quickly finds the hit the target has a boat of his own they have a boat battle but it's a 2v1 since lee is with stampy and together they make hit the target walk the plank now believing they've defeated him christmas time stampy adds santa to the love garden and misspells his name he spells it wrong every christmas episode by the way Way. Santa crashes in Stampy's backyard and is super ill. Luckily, Stampy has the golden apple I told you was important, and boom, he's healed. Santa then hand delivers a gift, a diamond pair of boots separate from Stampy's classic iron ones, and these are for special occasions only. Let's see whether they fit me. Oh, they do look good. I like their color. The color does look good. Oh, they're comfy as well. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk up and down and try them out. You're always told to walk up and down when you're in shoe shops trying on shoes, so I'm going to do that. They're comfy. They're all like padded and furry on the inside. Very nice Christmas boots, aren't they? <laughs> but in classic Stampy fashion, he needs to expand his vehicle arsenal, now building a submarine. Days go by a building, and it's finally time to go for a ride. They find a cave to go explore, and guess what? Hit the target is there holding a bow straight at them. After walking the plank, he became a man of the sea, making a base down under the surface. Stampy, as he previously has, finds a brand new hit the target to-do list. Hit the target vanishes, and Stampy is left very, very confused. But it's minigame time. Stampy hosts tournaments, Lee is helping with everything still, and Fear a Dub is added for a little bit. Stampy though realizes it's not fair Lee and him only have one cake to share each morning, so they go downstairs to the cloning machine. The cloning machine works on the cake, so logically... I think it's worked. I think I've managed to successfully clone another Stampy cat. Somehow, nothing strange happens, and he just goes on with the day. The Stampy clone rides off into the distance, and Stampy gets to work on a brand new shop. Alright, deep breath, it's about to get intense. Stampy goes to build a spa, sees a figure in the distance, and you guessed it, it's at the target. Lee and Stampy ambush, but mess up somehow. Stampy mid-chase meets his clone again, and the clone tries to help him. Lee Bear kills Stampy's clone, thinking it's an enemy, but good news for us all, Stampy's clone has already killed Hit the Target. Stampy soon realizes that was a clone and not the real Hit the Target, so Stampy checks the clone room for Hit the Target and is left with yet another sign. The sign says your dogs will one day be mine. The Caring Cat Clinic Hospital is founded and Stampy cures a villager who he names Harrison. Fred the Friendly Enderman gets a bedroom and Harrison gets a surprise party for his brand new house that Stampy built him. Now it's time to build the fire station. Oh wait, Stampy ran out of black wool. Better go find some. Uh oh, that's hit the target in a hot air balloon. Stampy flies up though in his own and they agree to duel on the bridge. Hit the target is sketchy as always and won't drop his bow so he's knocked off. All leading up to a super confusing moment. Oh he's falling down, he's falling down. Whoa! What was that? Someone just picked him up. What was that thing? Whoa! Look at it go! I think that was the UFO. I think that was the UFO that my uh, my lunar friends live in. <gasps> Why would the Lunar Friends help hit the target? Or were they capturing him? Welcome, Squishy Quack. She, she's a duck. All the helpers in Stampy build a playful popo station, a shark mini game, a bank called Piggy Bank, and apparently had pigs stealing carrots from the bank. They build a school, celebrate Halloween, and meet Harriet. Not Tubman, just the villager. One day in the not too far future though, we wake up to something a bit new. Gone on a picnic holiday somewhere very far away. I left your favorite food in the chest. The bear. Okay, has he left me a cake? What? He hasn't even left me a cake. Left me a cookie? Left me a cookie. Since when was my favorite food a cookie? But Lee Bear's gone away on a picnic holiday. Stampy then goes days and days without hearing from Lee, all up to Christmas Day, where his bear friend is nowhere to be seen. Stampy checks all of his presents. He got one from a friend named Choo Choo, I Ballistic Squid, and the final one said from an old friend. Stampy opened it and it had hit the target inside. He jumped out to attack Stampy, but somehow vanished. Stampy isn't giving up this time, though. He needs to know the the involvement of the lunar friends and what on earth is going on with Lee Bear. Stampy ends up trapped and hit the target's castle. Lee Bear is also being held captive, forced to bake cakes for hit the target, and Barnaby is here too. Hit the target demands Stampy to pull a lever that will release lava to kill everyone inside, meaning Lee Bear and Barnaby and himself. Luckily for Stampy though, the lunar friends appear and distract at the target. Stampy breaks the iron bars to let Lee and Barnaby escape. The lunar friends were apparently tricked by hit the target, and Stampy understands, forgiving them and celebrating Christmas. Everything is normal for for a long time, a very long time. They simply build 
mini games, have fun, enjoy the world they've created for themselves, and build shops. Until one day, Stampy finds a cake lying on the ground. Tastes a little bit, tastes a little bit different to the ones Lee Bear makes. Um, let me go. Um, oh, it's, it's just there's a weird aftertaste to it. It's, it's, it's okay. It's, it's quite tasty, but um, it's actually, it's actually making me. I think it's making me a, a little bit sleepy. I'm getting a, a little bit tired, and it just makes me. I think I just want to hold a sleep. <sighs> Upon waking up, Hit the Target tries to drown Stampy. With a near escape, Stampy realizes Hit the Target's castle is right across from his fun land, so he runs back home as fast as he possibly can. He checks on his dogs, and every dog is there, besides one, besides Barnaby himself. Within a few weeks, Stampy will find Barnaby in a cage with lava all around him. Stampy frees him, but for the first time ever, Hit the Target does something seriously bad, lighting Stampy's house on fire. Stampy contacts Beat the Heat Fire Station, and Lee Bear immediately runs over to put out the fire. But in the chaos, Hit the Target had escaped once again. It felt like we were living in a loop, a loop that would very soon break with one of the most unexpected twists yet. Lee gives Stampy a book, saying that he's leaving. I'm afraid to tell you that I am leaving. I have been your number one helper for years, for years but, but I feel, I feel like, like you no longer need me. I am going to travel across the world looking for people that need help. I will also try and track down hit the target so you and your dogs will be safe. Just that fast, Lee was gone, never to be seen again. He left the recipe for the cake, but Stampy wasn't able to make it quite the same it seemed. Things were really tough for the first time yet. Stampy works to move on, and while going to the doghouse, he meets Viva Dash, a new helper he'll bring to play a mini game with him and Rosie that day in the Funland. Viva, when he met her, was holding a poison potion, which was a bit odd, but Stampy just needed some new friends. It goes a couple days, and Stampy and Viva are becoming close. They're gonna build a a vet together. That is, until Viva doesn't come into Stampy's room this day. He goes to build it on his own, but she soon appears, making him follow her all the way to hit the target's lair. And this is where Stampy will realize he was betrayed yet again. Viva and hit the target were working together. They spawn the wither to kill him, and Stampy is left alone. If I can get on top of the, the castle, I think I might have a, a chance of being able to defeat it, but I'm getting stuck here, and who? Who's that? That is William Beaver. They defeat the Wither and go back to Stampy's house. It turns out William Beaver had lived in the cave where Stampy spent his first ever night this whole time. Losing Viva and Lee Bear was super rough, but William Beaver would agree to be a new helper for Stampy and always restoring and becoming balanced yet again. Stampy with the restored balance is able to build some cool stuff, even making a teleporter, which is how he plans to get to his fun land every day. And back we are again to Christmas time. Stampy went to the doghouse but saw colored wool that led to Santa and a new reindeer he hadn't seen before. The two them were in trouble. They had lost all of the presents, so Stampy helped them find them, and they all went to the North Pole together. Eating dinner together, Stampy asked Polly the Reindeer to stay in the lovely world, and Polly agreed. Welcome Polly the Reindeer as Stampy's newest helper. All is normal, and Stampy, William, and Polly race to the Funland. Stampy takes the teleporter to get a head start. The teleporter, though, brings him to a dungeon with spiders, so he retakes it, now sent to a parkour room with falling lava. He escaped the parkour, but was teleported now to hit the target's fortress. Stampy breaks the the teleporter so it couldn't be used by Viva Dash or hit the target and sneakily runs back home. And he catches them right in the act. Look, there's hit the target and Viva Dash. I think they're trying to push my dogs into the teleporter. That must have been what their plan was. Stampy luckily scares them away and saves his dogs yet again. It seems peace at last was coming for the lovely world. Hit the target had been defeated again and he had two new helpers who were absolutely awesome. Stampy was excited every day to build something new. But sadly, this was really the beginning of Hit the Target's reign. Stampy and the helpers go mining, but William is acting odd. Not much to think of it in the moment. Later though, he heads to the doghouse where he finds his helpers in a trance sliding the dogs around. He immediately thinks it's Viva and Hit the Target's doing, but on the way to their castle, he notices a super weird structure on top of his lighthouse. He finds a contraption called the Brainwave Transmitter. He checks all around the machine and finds the name of his three Minecraft helpers, William Beaver, Squishy Quack, and Polly Reindeer. He breaks the machine and Polly helps him switch the names to Mind Control Hit the Target and Viva Dash. They then find them running and Polly starts throwing snowballs, which Hit the Target thinks are snowballs of doom since he's mind controlled. Viva and Hit the Target book it back to their castle and Stampy would have a moment to rest. To Stampy, Happy birthday from Fizzy Elephant. Who is Fi who's Fizzy Elephant? I've never heard of Fizzy Elephant. This seems to be a birthday present, but it's not my birthday. This, <laughs> this, this is a bit of a surprise. Well, let's, I guess I should open the, the present up and see what's... Oh, 
Hello! You, you must be Fizzy Elephant! Stampy just got another new helper. The dream team of Polly Reindeer, William Beaver, and now Fizzy Elephant. Stampy celebrates and is soon preparing for the grand opening of the Fancy Pants restaurant. When Stampy gets to the restaurant though, he realizes it's all been changed to red and black, showing hit the target is going to attack soon once again. He charges the castle, confident as can be, he's going to attack first this time. This is the first time Stampy had the edge, but quickly it changed when Viva Dash hurt Stampy and healed hit the target. Stampy ran back while being chased, fought them off, and was safe to see another day. They build a cinema, a game called Enderball, a film studio, the helpers put on a movie, they make a coffee shop, a shark mini game, a sky high restaurant to be able to see the whole world, and a ton of more games, and even a jewelry store. Stampy then surprises Polly with a brand new house, and as we've seen before, there's always calm before the storm. And I think it's an absolutely amazing addition, and oh, what's that? Is that some sort of beacon or something? What's that weird noise it's making though? What? What is that thing? And oh, there was an explosion. There was an explosion from inside of the house. And look, there's something in the sky. Stampy then stacks blocks up to the beam machine in the sky and flies it over to hit the target's fortress. He fires it and destroys the whole thing. Stampy famously says he thinks that it could be it for hit the target since his base is now completely gone. So wrong he was. Because a few days later, playing their new minigame, the helpers are kidnapped by hit the target and Viva Dash. Luckily, Stampy broke them free again. They celebrate another Christmas and Polly is allowed to stay for one more year and then needs to return to her duties with Santa. Years and years now into Stampy's lovely world, he looked over everything. The good times, all the buildings, and everything that was created. And of course, Hit the Target just has to show up. Stampy is able to actually kill him this time, but Barnaby himself is dead. The dog from day one Stampy has kept safe is gone. But not for long. Viva Dash rewinds time with a time control machine, and this means Barnaby lives but so does hit the target. Fast forward some mini games and fun times had, Stampy was going to the skyscraper to show it off and his voice is suddenly cut off. And then the only other dog is of course Barnaby and but Hit the target was there and we hear him speak for the first time, but it's through Stampy's own voice. Hello, Stampy. Surprised to see me? Ah, uh, ah, uh, I wouldn't do that if I was you. You're going to want to hear what I have to say. You may never speak again otherwise. This place that you have righteously named Stampy's Lovely World is neither lovely or yours. We all live here, yet you try and control everything. A block isn't broken or placed without your permission as you order around your slaves to build whatever you want. No wonder your old slaves never return. Hit the Target explained his whole issue with Stampy, but to no avail. They went down the tower, and soon William Beaver and Polly Reindeer attacked Hit the Target, and he was forced to retreat. Hit the Target would be seen a couple days later, saying he needs to free this world, and now his motive was the clearest it had been yet. He really thought that Stampy was the evil one here. Stampy and the helpers build restaurants, shops, and mini games, knowing it isn't over but having a lot of fun. Stampy coming up on Christmas morning again returns to the clubhouse to celebrate, but oddly enough, a friendly hit the target and Viva Dash are there, not attacking him, just holding a cake? He asked them to eat the cake and soon realized that they couldn't. They were robots. Stampy went to the doghouse to check in on the dogs and was trapped by the real hit the target and Viva Dash. A robot version though of Polly Reindeer comes in from nowhere and scares Viva and hit the target away. Now if you remember, Polly was supposed to be given back to Santa this year, but luckily Santa is willing to take the Polly robot to work for him and leaves Polly to be with Stampy in the lovely world. A key moment though, a moment of friendship, breaking through rivalry, was right around the corner. The doghouse has every dog besides Barnaby, so Stampy as he does goes to the fortress, rebuilt as new. Stampy falls into a trap and Viva Dash herself falls into the same one. They agree to make a truce to both escape. They help each other for the first time since she betrayed him way back when. Viva helps Stampy get Barnaby back and make sure hit the target doesn't know she's helping him. The weird part though, the next time they meet, Viva would be just as evil as she always had been. But now, let me speed this up for you. Stampy finds a weird portal door. It leads to a mirror dimension with different dogs, different helpers, and soon finds a way back. Hit the target and Viva are stealing his dogs but are stopped with the help of a clone Stampy. He celebrates by building the windmill and a few mini games. But here we are. In the nether, Stampy has a weird occurrence happen. It turns out Stampy his account was hacked by no other than Viva Dash, the redstone genius herself. As he approached the doghouse, hit the target spot on him, and they got into a battle. However, Stampy got kicked out of his world, sending him back to the main Minecraft menu. He loaded back in, but all of his dogs were gone. Luckily for Stampy, William Beaver was there to help, and they chased the enemies away. Polly snuck into the fortress and used the computer to get Stampy's Minecraft account back, but this was one of the scariest attacks Stampy had seen to date. Finally, years and years after the beginning, William Beaver and Stampy go in search for an in 
portal to finally kill the dragon, mainly just to get Elytra. Hit the target attacks with the darkness machine, but the attack is quickly resolved, and it is once again Christmas in the lovely world. Always a truly wonderful time of the year. I am going to go and deliver a Christmas cookie to Santa, uh, and I'm going to do it as a surprise underneath his Christmas tree, and then hopefully he'll be happy opening presents in the same way that we are all happy opening presents uh, in our worlds. With the plan in mind for this year's holidays, Polly and Stampy fly off to the North Pole. They distract Santa and sneak in the chimney to give the gift. Somehow Stampy loses the cookie, so he bakes Santa a cake, and they're back off to the lovely world to deal with some more inevitable attacks. Stampy plans to throw a party at the Fancy Circle Park to celebrate his lovely world. But while going there instead of helpers, he sees Hit the Target and Viva, and they're at the Circle Park with a bunch of dogs. Stampy sets Barnaby and goes to interrogate them. Suddenly, the dogs attack Stampy, and he realizes that they assembled a dog army of their own. Yep, Hit the Target's very goal from the literal first day had been accomplished. Stampy and his dogs kill a ton of the enemy dogs, but Stampy after the battle realizes that three of his died. Benji, Cory, and Fluffy all died in the battle. Stampy grieves, but needs to make sure Hit the Target can't clone any more dogs. So he finds the original in the clone machine, tames it, and names him Secret. Stampy builds a memorial for Benji, Cory, and Fluffy, and Secret becomes one of his main dogs that he brings around the lovely world. Now, the question really is, when will there be a true conclusion to the battles with Hit the Target? Well, we're getting there, but there needed to be more road bumps for it to get smooth. He traps Hit the Target a few days later, but all of his dogs were stolen yet again. He tries to hunt them down, but is kidnapped along with Polly and William. Hit the Target runs away and blows up Stampy's bedroom to build a room for him in Viva. He officially claims he rules the lovely world once and for all. Quickly denied by Stampy, and him and the helpers pull off a super sneaky plan and make Hit the Target have to retreat yet again. Now, it was time for Stampy to rebuild his bedroom and redesign it, being the first time ever since the start. But coming up on 10 years exactly in the lovely world, we got an explanation on the reality of Gregory's death. Remember? the first ever dog that was supposedly shot by a skeleton? Stampy is led into a lower part of Hit the Target's castle, where Hit the Target explains with signs that Stampy is gonna be here forever, has finally gotten all of Stampy's dogs, and that Hit the Target killed Gregory all of those years ago. One final thing, I killed Gregory! What? I thought, I thought Gregory was killed by a skeleton, and oh look, is this meant to be my house? And that's meant to be him, and then the bones, Gregory, I can't look, I can't look, I gotta press the button, oh no, I'm into darkness, and the spiders, oh no, the spiders, there's a spider spawner right here, all of the spiders are attacking me, and I'm stuck here in the minecart. Stampy was in a bad place, out. physically in the spider trap, and of course just hearing his dog was killed by Hit the Target was terrible for him. He manages to escape and finds Barnaby after a while. Barnaby has a green potion bubbles all around him and had dog hurting sounds, but Stampy assumes it'll be okay. Stampy, staying positive, builds the 10-year anniversary monument, but when he next visits the Love Garden, it wouldn't all be so positive. He's greeted with three signs that say Barnaby has been poisoned, he will slowly die, come to my castle for the antidote. It's a super long journey and a lot of explanation, but basically Hit the Target wants to run the world and in turn will unpoison Barnaby. Stampy counter offers with the Funland and Hit the Target is more than happy to take the Funland as his own. Thus comes Hit the Target's Funland. Stampy, while building new games outside Side of his actual fun land, kept seeing Hit the Target and Viva playing his games wrong, copying the designs, and just making it a mess. With that, he had to start scheming how to get the fun land back in his control. If I take over his castle and then say, I will give you your castle back if you give me the fun land back, I feel like he can't say no to that trade. Like, he's got to care more about his castle than my fun land. With the plan set in motion, he moved into the castle. Fizzy alerts Stampy that Hit the Target has arrived, and the plan works, but only for one reason. The reason being, it's Christmas Day and Hit the Target is feeling a bit nice. Stampy plays some games Hit the Target made and realizes how bad he was at making games. Very glad to have the fun land all back to himself. Now, this next event would lead up to one of the biggest fights we've seen yet. Stampy finds Viva and Hit the Target in his love garden. And across the last weeks, he's been getting splashed with dozens of potions. Stampy, though, thought it was his friends messing with him. Soon, Stampy realizes they were all part of this plan to make him super weak. Stampy is brought back to the castle, but somehow with all of his dogs, he kills kills Viva and hit the target. He destroys their beds and sends them back to the original spawn point of the world, which is the igloo. Stampy gets his loot back and uses the anti-aging cream they had in the chest. It restores him to full health from all the negative potion effects, and he gets home with a crazy decision in mind. Stampy had seriously changed as a result of all of this war. And what a decision that was. Stampy adding the people who had attacked him for 11 years straight to the love garden. I am going to add them to my love garden. 
And the reason for that is something that I've learned today is that fighting to counter fighting just creates more fighting and hurt. And the only way any of us can win is if they change. I need to show them love not hate. And with this, he hosts the very final minigame tournament. The final minigame to ever be played in Stampy's lovely world, and it was all coming to a nice, lovely ending for a lovely world. Until the final day. Stampy decides to add 58 new people to his love garden. He's gonna take Barnaby for a walk, and on the walk stops at the post office, greeted by a whole bunch of letters. The final of which reading, to Stampy, we should talk, your place, hit the target. Stampy was confused. Was hit the target trying to make peace, or was this yet another scheme. He sees him on his balcony, but remembers way back to the beginning of the whole world. The only way they could work out a real conversation was in the nether. He doesn't want to solve things over signs. They go to the nether and Stampy sits down Barnaby, entering the portal to a trap. Hit the target has stolen Barnaby yet again and Stampy is left to fight mobs. Luckily his helpers soon arrive and they escape. Just in time though for Hit the Target to escape with Barnaby. Stampy has a rooftop fight with Hit the Target, but there's no shot he could win. He's at two and a half hearts the entire time. All he can do is run to the castle and hope to save Barnaby. As we've seen, he finds him in a cage, above lava and in danger once again. Hit the target and Viva are on the balcony and Stampy makes the biggest decision he's ever had to make. You know what? I've put Barnaby in mortal danger one too many times. Don't do it, hit the target. You don't need to. Your evil scheme has worked. You can have it, all of it. If you don't hurt Barnaby and let us go peacefully, Stampy's lovely world will be no more. It will all belong to you. I will gather up my friends and I will leave everything we built to you. It's not worth staying here if that will put the ones I love in danger. That would be selfish. I'm proud of this world we built, but it doesn't define me. I'm ready to move on to something new. And Viva Dash, what about you? You don't have to stay here with him. You're welcome to join us. We would want you to join us. What do you say? Viva, though, makes her decision to stay on the team of Hit the Target. Of course, Hit the Target takes the deal, but after all this, Stampy wasn't able to keep the world he spent so long creating. But that wasn't important to him. Looking back, it was just the helpers, the pets, and the memories that truly define the lovely world. So, Stampy gathers his pets and says the final goodbye, leaving the world he spent over a decade on just in time for Viva Dash to decide to join him on the new journey. Everything I said back there was entirely true. This world really does mean a lot to me, but not as much as you do or any of the other friends I've made here. Hit the target may have taken the things we built, but he can't take the memories we've made. In a way, we've both grown up together in this place and we've changed in that time. And it is sad to be saying goodbye to my lovely world, but I think it's the right moment to do it. Our time here has helped make us who we are today. And who knows what's gonna happen next in our lives. So for the final time, from the bottom of my heart, I want to say thanks for watching and I'll see you later.